A long time ago, almost all forest mushrooms used to feed on decomposing stuff on the forest floor. You could say they were death eaters. But over the past few million years, a bunch of different species from different parts of the mushroom kingdom have defected and evolved a new strategy. And now, a mushroom civil war is raging. It's the death eaters versus the sap suckers. Hi, I'm David, and this is Minute Earth. Instead of relying on dead stuff for food, the sap suckers have struck up an alliance with trees. These mushrooms grow long, thin tendrils that wind together and hook into a tree's roots, extending the tree's reach underground and helping them grab even more nutrients and water. In exchange, the mushrooms get to tap into the tree's delicious sugary sap. That's why we're calling them sap suckers. If you're a mushroom fan, you're probably already familiar with sap suckers because their sugary diet makes them great for eating. But before they make it onto our plate, they're in conflict with the death eaters. The two side strategies are so different that it seems like they'd have little reason to compete. But there's one critical resource that sap suckers don't get from their alliance with trees. Nitrogen, which is left over when stuff decomposes. It turns out that all mushrooms need nitrogen to form proteins and other critical molecules. So sap suckers have to search for nitrogen in the surrounding soil, setting up a battle. Since Death Eaters aren't tied to trees and spread their feelers out everywhere, they're often the first to encounter nitrogen, and they use their specialized decomposing enzymes to quickly break it down and hoard it before the sap suckers can grab much at all. Sap suckers who can't get enough nitrogen die, and to add insult to injury, Death Eaters are happy to feast on the corpses of any sap suckers who don't make it. The sap suckers, though, have some tricks under their caps. They send out sneaky, straw-like tendrils to siphon the hoarded nitrogen away from the Death Eaters. And some sap suckers have developed some nifty chemical weapons. Black truffles, for example, can produce a toxin strong enough to kill other nearby mushrooms. And these sap sucker strategies are working to outmaneuver the Death Eaters. Sap suckers now dominate more than two thirds of forests worldwide. That's actually been good for the forests since sap suckers supercharged trees' ability to grow big and survive droughts, which is good for us humans. Forests dominated by sap suckers are 20% better at removing planet warming carbon from the air than those controlled by Death Eaters. But humans might be inadvertently helping out the Death Eaters. The huge amounts of nitrogen we use to grow food ends up seeping into nearby forests, where Death Eaters are able to quickly find it and use it, which helps supercharge their growth. And the pollution we release into the air is harming the trees with which the sap suckers partner, preventing them from thriving. So while the sap suckers are winning, the Death Eaters have the momentum, at least for now. In other words, it's still not clear which side, if any, will win the fungal rumble in the jungle. This video was made possible by the University of Minnesota and a grant from the National Science Foundation. Peter Kennedy's lab in the university's College of Biological Sciences studies how plants and microbes interact, with a special focus on ectomycorrhizal fungi, that is, the sapsucker mushrooms. Professor Kennedy, along with Sarah Hobby, Lang Delancey, Francois Maillard, Matt Smith, and Kabir Pei, are studying how these fungi increase forests' ability to absorb carbon. They hope to learn how geographically widespread these effects are, as well as how much they vary depending on ecological factors such as tree type and soil depth. To learn more about their research, check out Professor Kennedy's website in the description. Thanks!